Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to make the dialogue typewriter effect pause whenever it encounters a punctuation, and we're also going to make it so that we can skip dialogue by pressing the spacebar. Alright, so let's start by opening up the dialogue system, and we're going to open up the typewriter effect, and we're going to start by defining what kind of uh, punctuation categories we have. So we're going to have multiple different categories for different wait times. So for example, a full stop would wait for longer than a comma. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to have a private read-only dictionary, which will contain hash sets of characters and also floats, just like that. So the pair is the hash sets of characters and floats. And we'll call this punctuations. And this will be a new dictionary. We'll just populate it at the very start. And for the first one, we're going to create a hash set with a full stop, a exclamation mark, and also a question mark. And I'll have these wait for 0.6 seconds. And then if we duplicate this line and set this to 0.3 seconds, then we can define stuff like comma, and perhaps semicolon, and perhaps also colon, to wait for half of that amount of time. And let's add a semicolon at the very end. So that's how we define new uh, categories of punctuation. So you can obviously add as many as you want with the uh, comma separator here, and also change these if you so desire. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and make a method for detecting whether a character is indeed a punctuation and then getting the wait time for it. So we're going to go and make a new method here, which will be a private bool and we'll call this is punctuation and this will take in a character to uh, search for so character and it will return a float as an out parameter which we'll call wait time just like that and so we're going to loop through the key value pair which is these up here where this is the key and this is the value so we'll do for each key value pair of type hash set, which was of type character, comma, float, in, oh sorry, we need to name it, so punctuation category, in punctuations, and we're going to do if punctuation category dot key dot contains the character that we're searching for, then the wait time is equal to the punctuation category dot value, and then we'll return true. Otherwise, if we didn't find it, then we're going to go ahead and set the wait time to be equal to default. That's the default value for float. And we'll return false, since we won't be using the wait time anyway. All right, so essentially we're looking through each of these um, hash sets here, and we're checking if it contains this character here that we're looking for. And if so, then we return the wait time, and we also return true to say that, yes, indeed, we did find it. And now we just need to update the type text enumerator here to essentially detect when it encounters a punctuation. And so first off, we're just going to store the last character index like that, and we'll set that equal to char index. And then we are going to add a for loop here. So for int i is equal to the last character index while i is less than the current character index, and then we'll do i++. Plus plus. And essentially what we're doing here is we're just looping through the characters that have been typed since the last time. So if your speed is extremely quick, or if your computer is lagging, then you might need to type more than one character at a time. And in that case, we type both of them in the same frame. So this essentially is to keep the frame rate consistency. And we're gonna move this in here. And then instead of setting the length to character index, we're just going to get the current index plus one. And then we're going to check if we're at the very end of the um, string, because in that case, we don't want to pause because we're at the very end. We don't want to pause. So we'll say bool is last is equal to i is greater than or equal to the text to type dot length minus one. So that just means that this is the final character. And so what we'll do then is we'll just pop down here and say if is punctuation and then the character we're currently at, so that's text to type at the ith index, then we want to get the wait time captured like that. 
and we are not at the very end so not is last and we want to check if the next one is not a punctuation so we can have stuff like dot 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 without each of them waiting for 0.6 seconds so we'll do not is punctuation oops not is punctuation text to type at the ith index plus one and we just want to discard the wait time then if all of this is indeed true then we want to say yield return new wait for seconds and then the wait time all right so what's happening here is we're checking is the character that we're currently at a punctuation and if that's the case we get the wait time here captured in this variable then we check if we aren't at the very end and then we also check if the next character is not a punctuation and if all of those conditions are met then we wait for the wait time defined right here so let's just go ahead and make sure that this works and uh, delete that line there so let's come back into unity and wait for it to compile we'll go up and talk to our red circle here and you can see that it does indeed pause but it also doesn't pause when we're at the exclamation mark at the very end let's just go ahead and open up our dialog objects here and let's add a whole bunch of exclamation marks and dots as well let's also add a comma here just to see that this does indeed work as we intended. So we can see that the pause time for the comma is a lot shorter than for the full stop. And we can also see that the full stops don't pause if the next one is also a full stop. And this also applies for the exclamation marks. And we can see it works exactly as we intended. All right, so that's pretty much it for the punctuation pauses. Right, let's go ahead and make it so that you can skip dialogue. So we're going to open up the typewriter effect and then we're going to go ahead and add a new property at the very top here. Public bool is running get private set. And this value here will be set to true at the very start of the type text enumerator and we'll set it to false at the very end. And we're also going to get rid of this line right here because we're going to be setting it from the outside. Okay, and then we are going to make the run method return nothing, so public void. And instead, we're going to store the coroutine inside of a private member variable, which we will call typing coroutine. So we'll do typing coroutine is equal to stop coroutine. And then we'll make a new public void called stop. And the stop method is going to call stop coroutine on the type in coroutine and it's also going to set is running equal to false. All right, so if we pop back into Unity now, we'll get some errors down here. And so if we open up the dialog UI and go down to the step through dialog enumerator here, we'll see where the problem is. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this and we're going to go ahead and make a new method, private enumerator, and we'll call this run typing effect. And this will take in the dialog to type. And so what this will do is it will just call typewriter effect.run with the dialog here as well as the text label. And then it's going to say while the typewriter effect is running, we're going to wait. So yield return null, wait one frame. And then we're going to say if input dot get key down code dot space then we just want to do typewriter effect dot stop and then inside of the step through dialog we're just going to say yield return run typing effect and we'll give it the dialog just like that and then we're just going to have to add a yield return null right here because if we press space here then it's going to jump immediately down here and wait for you to press space to advance the dialog so that's going to happen instantly both at the same time and we don't want that so we just have to wait one more frame and obviously we also need to make sure that we say text label dot text is equal to the dialog because we pulled that out of the typewriter effect so if we pop back into unity now and we go ahead and hit play we can go talk to our red circle here and we can press space to skip and it still works just as intended all right that's going to do it for me for this time thank you so much for watching and until next time take care